Namaste. Conversations are part of our spiritual culture. Conversations are relaxed, authentic, free flowing. I believe a lot of learning and inspirations can be drawn from such conversations. Today, I'm sharing some precious moments of a conversation I recently had with my very dear friend Dr. Karan Singh in Delhi at 94. I find him as an example of living spirituality. He is innocent like a child, calm like the depths of an ocean, joyful like a free-flowing river, churning out deep sutras of wisdom like a rishi in this free-flowing samvad that we had. I have purposefully kept the camera away from me this time so that we can really focus on the precious words and look into the heart of this camouflaged sadhak i hope you will enjoy this very precious session and will be inspired by this enjoy this namaste namaskar kare star and i think you don't have to be on the topic topic no no i understand what you're saying free will you and i think uh, i get just quite uh, nervous <laughs> shooting you somebody of this stature for the first time <laughs> i get nervous i think i get nervous i <laughs> should be <laughs> shooting dr karan singh <laughs> for somebody who's a 21 year old is not a joke what would you say on that well i got to start somewhere <laughs> we as well start with- Somebody who's ninety-three. <laughs> Do you think it's a good idea to start from the top? I think so. <laughs> Straight away. Well, shooting Dr. Karan Singh. That's a good beginning. That's a good beginning. I may say so myself. <laughs> But I've been, you know, I've been photographed so extensively. I was born in a hotel in Cannes. Wow. Do you know the south, south of France? And I was my first photograph was taken when I was six weeks old. Wow! With my mother, it's in the other room. So from then on, for ninety three years, people have been photographing. How does it feel to be such having such photogenic face and well captured all around the world? I don't. I never look at the photograph once a day. <laughs> so we got dozens of albums. I never look through the old albums. Oh, yeah. Some you people look- are very keen. They could be. I I don't want don't. I don't like to hear myself in my lecture. Oh, and I I like lecture. I love lecturing. Mm-hmm. I don't like to hear it again <laughs> for some odd reason. <laughs> and uh, has somebody told you that you've got very beautiful eyes? Yeah, somebody did actually. Mm-hmm. Are you quoting from my autobiography? You know what happened? Fine. I went to Rajiv Gopal Acharya. See that he was our first Governor General. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Before the vice, when the viceroy left, there was a gap between the president and the viceroy. So the governor general was C. Rajagopal Acharya, a very famous freedom fighter. And a few years later, he was at a party in Tin Muti at Jawa, for Jawa Rajesh. And uh, I went up to him and said, "Sir, I wonder whether you remember me." He said, "Of course, I remember you. You've got such beautiful eyes." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say after that. I think we want to know about your life more. That which is yet not captured. So how does your daily routine look? Don't all don't want to know all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, my daily routine. You see, I get up at seven thirty, and uh, by the time I you know I go to the puja at eight. Wow. Eight to ten. Two hours of puja. Two hours of puja. It includes the Surya Arga, Shivji, the Goddess, some Kriya Yoga. It's it's a melange. It's not one thing only. It's a mixture of various things that I've learned over the years. Then I have breakfast at ten. It's fairly late for breakfast, but I have a light breakfast. I don't. I cook on wheat flakes and some almonds and things like that. And then I come down. By the time I finish breakfast, ready, I get out. At eleven, eleven to one thirty, I'm here. Are you working this, in the office? I'm working in the office, being photographed, being interviewed, or working with my stenographer, 
look at some papers, a Thai country, solid work. 1.30, I have lunch. Then again, then from 1.30, that's when I begin putting on television. I see. I don't put on television before that. Mm. I listen to the 1.30 and the 2, 2 o'clock news. Mm. And lunch comes in at 1.30 on a tray here. Oh, this study, huh? So I eat here. And this is my study, my dining room and all. 2 to 3 is another period when um, I, I usually, you know, relax, walk around. When I'm walking, I just switch this on and I have uh, music. I'm very really careful. I love listening to music a lot. This is that. Sheila Grimm. Aapka Jnana Pachana Sangeet Goja. Tell by the way. So, I walk, when I walk, I'm supposed to walk half an hour a day at least. Okay. So I sometimes walk, or read the newspapers. That's the time when I get through my, at least two or three newspapers. Mm. Three o'clock I go up to rest. Okay. And I'm in incommunicado till five. Oh, wow. I sleep one hour mm. only in between. I, I get up at 4.30, dress again, come down at five. Okay. Then from five to eight, mm. I'm again three hours here. Wow. Mm. So I certainly so five to six hours I spent in the office. That's the time when I meet people over a cup of tea. Mm. And we've been meeting so that, many times. That's our time of meeting. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And... Uh, when people would call, or you know, or sometimes I watch a serial, like I watch The Crown, and there's several other serials. Right. A very funny serial called uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I watched. There was a good one, uh, Bandish Bandits. Bandish Bandits was very really good. The great. music. The last. Uh, Episode. episode of that is really excellent. I've seen it many times. Oh, wow. It can be a standalone thing because there's such beautiful singing. And then I eat at nine. Mm -hmm. By nine o'clock, at that time, I'm watching Rajdeep Sarthasai. Oh, you do that? And I watch him. I think he's a very good actor. I see. He's very intelligent and mm -hmm. sharp. Mm -hmm. Not too biased one way or the other. Mm -hmm. There's some channels, as you know, which are impossible to watch. Right. But this one is, and then by about 10 o'clock, I go back into the puja. Oh. Mm. 10 to 10.30, half an hour, I'm again in the puja. Wow. Mm. 10.30, I come back. By the time, 11 o'clock. Wow. That's a very tight and disciplined state. See, see, I try and keep it uh, regular. Uh -huh. You know, erratic lifestyle. It's not, not good. I think people ask me, what is your secret? I have several secrets. My real secret, as I tell everybody, when they ask me, what is your secret? I say, this is, this is my secret. Ah, oh, no, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, one secret is to have a disciplined life. Yes. Not rigidly, but when you have a, when you discipline yourself, you enjoy life more. Right. Otherwise, you, you know, erratic can be a bhagra, can be the bhagra, can be the bhagra. Now I know what, I, what is to be done and what time it is to be done. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I think that's a good secret if people can follow. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And two and a half hours of puja every day. Yes, well, that, I don't know. <laughs> you shouldn't be too impressed with that. <laughs> I don't know how effective they are, my pujas. But I do it, I enjoy it. And there's a galaxy of gods you create. Galaxy of gods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure I don't miss anybody. <laughs> so I've really got now in my home, you, you've seen three main things. The left side are Radha, which my mother bought. It must have been almost now 100 years ago. From, and that's still there. Wow. And then on the right side is a Mahakali. Mm. So the 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 Shakta, the Vaishnava and the Shaiva. The three streams that make up Hinduism. Mm. The three most powerful streams. Powerful stream. Powerful stream. And I've also seen changing the flow now. You love to listen to music a lot. You see, music has been very much part of my life. 
<clears throat> I've been very fortunate. I learned my Pahadi Dogri songs from my mother. I see. Who was from Kangra. I see. She was all village. She wasn't the princess. She was a village girl. Many of the Dogri songs that I learned and many of the later ones that I composed were the tunes that, that I had learned from her. No, mere wo bhi bane hue hain. Records bhi bane hue hain. It's often played in the mornings in Jammu radio station or other places. So that I learned from. My father was a great uh, judge of classical Indian classical music. Oh, I see. He got me to start learning by the age of 12. From the age of 12, now for 80 years, I've been singing. Oh. I still practice riyas once a week. Oh, you still do the riyas? Wow. Can we, can we get a glimpse of that? You wanted to sing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... No, but the point is, the classical, I can't sing now because I, that needs sing, but I, I can sing a Dogri song if you like. Yes, please. At least two lines. At least two lines. Atman Nama Shish Nama Bhaan Jai Ho Shri Ganesh O Atman Nama Shish Nama Jai Ho Shri Ganesh Jai Ho Shri Ganesh Jai Ho Shri Ganesh O Atman Nama Shish Nama Jai Ho Shri Ganesh Pahle Tera Dhyan Lagana Tere Rupa No Rale O Tere Rupa No Rale Karaj Sare Siddh Karo Sankta Kato Sare E Jai Ho Shri Ganesh O Atman Nama Shishanam, Jai Ho Shri Ganesh. O Mukharada Chinne Do Bhagavati Da Pyaara, A Bhagavati Da Pyaara. Shankar Teri Chaya Kare Jagat Darak Vala, Jai Ho Shri Ganesh. O Atman Nama Shishanam, Jai Ho Shri Ganesh. Jai Ho Shri Ganesh, Jai Ho Shri Ganesh. All the Aarti that I sing to Ganesh, to Goddess and to Shri, Mary Apni composition. Have you also written love compositions? Not really. Most of my compositions have been, have been devotional compositions. Oh. So that's one form of love, mind. Huh, but uh, you go to fall in love with the divine. With the divine, otherwise it wouldn't work. Right, right. Romanticizing your connection with the divine. Is, is that what Bhakti is all about? I think that's what they do because Bhakti is nothing but love for the divine. Mm -hmm. You see, love has many dimensions. Right. There's, there's physical love, there's emotional love, there's intellectual love, there's... A, uh, and, and love cuts across all barriers. Divine and human, sexual orientation, whatever. Yet love doesn't have any, any bandhan. So with divine, can you also experience heartbreak? <laughs> well, I suppose not heartbreak, but sometimes one is disappointed. But by God's grace, I've been very lucky. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't had any serious heartbreak. <laughs> well, you know what happened was, I was married when we were very young. I was nineteen and my wife was thirteen. Oh, and we were married for sixty years. Wow. Wow. So we grew up together. Correct. Literally grew up Literally. together. And there was nobody else in the house. No chacha, no taya, no mama, no mama, nobody. Just the two of us. Wow. So we perforce had to, start, you know, yeah. develop our own uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. That is a very different day yeah, like that. that. Totally different. Yeah. That was a long time ago. I was married in 1950. Mm -hmm. I think without music and without love, Life would not be worth living. What is it? What is it? I love poems. There's a beautiful poem by Yeats. <clears throat> when you are old and grey and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace? And loved your beauty with love false or true. But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you. And loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled. And paced upon the mountains overhead. And hid his face amid a crowd of stars. 
What do you mean? Kya baat hai? Kya baat hai? Kya baat hai? If you get me to start recitation, I can go on the whole day. Yeah. I love recitation. You love recitations of? In many languages. Yeah. In English, in Hindi, in Urdu. Urdu ka bhi kya hai? In Urdu ka bhaat. Azaaron khwahish hai aisi ki har khwahish pe dam nikle. Okay. Bhaat nikle meri arman hai lekin phir bhi kam nikle. Nikalna khuld se aadam ka sunte aaye thai lekin bade bhe aadur ho kar tere kuchhe se. Radhi was a great. Great man. What is so strong where such poetry emerges? I don't know. It's got something very deep within me somehow. This poetry, uh, I've been blessed with a, with a, if I may say so much, a remarkable memory. Mm-hmm. So I can remember all these poems without looking at them. I did a five language recitation in IIC last month. I see. Oh. Five language, no books, nothing, just from from my mind. Wow. So uh, that's a gift. Yeah. But you have to. A gift you ought to always have to keep using it. Mm. If you don't, you may be born with a good voice, but if you don't sing, you know it'll never develop. That's a beautiful point. So I think that's an important, that's a very important point. That the gift that you have, you have got to use it and develop it further. You you uh, treasure the gift. You uh, respect the gift by using it. By neglecting it, you are in fact uh, doing disservice to yourself. And also uh, being rude to the gift person who gave you the gift. Wow, that's profound. <laughs> <laughs> so, from the Indian Bollywood scene, uh, the golden era of music. Uh, yes, I love. I love the Hemant Kumar, Muhammad Rafi. Those earlier songs. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw a film called Dosti. Dosti, no. Very beautiful song by Muhammad Rafi. Ah. Yes, he was a very good singer. Hemant Kumar started. When we were growing up, it was Hemant Kumar, then Muhammad Rafi, and then Tishar Kumar. Ah. And among the women, it was Geeta Dutt, Lata Mangeshkar, and Asha Bhosle. Ah. These are the six real artists, as far as music is concerned. So, as far as acting is concerned, my favorite actor was Prithvi Raj Kapoor. Oh, yes. I mean, he was far superior, I think, to his offspring. If I may say so, <laughs> without being rude. You know these films, yeah. Sikandar's film, Bani, uh-huh. Surab Modi and Pishviraj Kapoor. What a comedy! Uh-huh. Surab Modi as Porus and Pishviraj as Alexander. Mm-hmm. I my first film I saw, I think it was in 1942, Ram Raj. Acha, but do you, do you sing some of Hemant Kumarji's? No, I sing Mohammad Rafi's songs. Ah, the two lines, something like that. You Mohammad Rafi's songs. تلاش میں ہے سہر بار بار گزری ہے تم آئے ہو نشب انتظار گزری ہے وہ بات سارے فسانے میں جس کا ذکر نہ تھا وہ بات ان کو بہت ناگوار گزری ہے تو آئے ہو نشب انتظار فضا کے ہاتھوں گلوں پر نہ جانے کیا گزری چمن سے آج سبا بے قرار گزری فیصا کہے نہ گل کھلے ہیں نہ ان سے ملے نہ میں پی ہے نہ گل کھلے ہیں نہ ان سے ملے نہ میں پی ہے عجیب رنگ میں اب کے بہار گزری ہے تم آئے ہو نہ شب آئے تھے فیض صاحب میں نے شیم ٹو ڈیری یہاں میرے گھر پہ تشریف لائے تھے اینڈ ہی سینگ یہ گانا میں نے ان سے ان کے سامنے سنا تھا پہاڑی میوزک I even love rock music, by the way. Yeah. I'm a rock addict from Bill Haley and the Comets, long before Elvis Presley. Sure. All the way down to um, Madonna. What a range. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have been a very passionate person in whatever you pursue. Well, I don't know about that. Politics... Uh, 
I don't think I was really passionate about politics. Really? Had I been passionate about politics, I might have become prime minister. Mm. Because I entered cabinet at the age of 37, 36. 36, huh? oh, I see. 20 years younger than anybody else in the room. But I was never, I, I, I lacked the killer instinct in politics. That's, uh, Luckily. Luckily. Because I don't want to be a killer. Mm -hmm. As you know, one of my uh, passions has been preservation. I was, do you know that I was responsible for the tiger becoming the national animal? Really? Yes. In, in 19, um, when was that? In 70, I think, or 69. I was in Indraji's cabinet for 10 years, 67 to 77. One day she asked me, said, will you take over the board, Indian board for wildlife? It had become somewhat defunct. It was headed by the Maharaj of Mysore, who was a great man, he's a pianist, no, but he wasn't very active. So I said, yeah. So early meeting with the introductions away, you know. Second meeting, I discovered to my surprise, the national animal was a lion. I said to myself, a lion is found only in one part of India. Uh, where the tiger is ubiquitous from all the way up in Uttarantra down to Kerala and across the country to the Sundarbans. We passed a resolution in the board urging the Prime Minister to change the national animal lion to the tiger. Oh. I took it to Indraji. She got it through the cabinet. That is how the tiger became the national animal. Wow. Is, is that uh, because you love your name also? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My enemies say that is the reason. <laughs> My pet name was always Tiger, as you know, but uh, nothing to do with that. And then we started Project Tiger huh? with only nine projects. And it's one of the most successful Tiger projects in the world. Wow. I think we have 55 or 70, 60 Tiger Reserves now. Wow. And if there are any Tigers in today, it is because of what we started. I inaugurated the Project Tiger from the Corbett National Park on Besakhi Day, 13th of April, 1972. Wow. Wow. And somebody, a foreign journalist, asked me, how many tigers will there be left by the end of the century? Remember, this was 72. That is, the century was still going. I said, I don't know how many will be left. But if any are left, it will be because of what we are doing today. Wow. wow. And now, as you know, we've gone up to over 3,600, if I remember. Yes. Yes. So, one of my things. <laughs> I think you, you love nature. I love nature. I love the uh, I like I, I like animals and I, I, I like music particularly. Music is very important for me. And I didn't know that your music is still played on uh, radio. It is. Your compositions are played on radio. Kya baat? Kya baat? Kya baat? <laughs> <laughs> There's been a large talk these days. What's the purpose of life, Karanji? Purpose of my life is divine realization. Really? That's it. Let's see. Sole purpose is the highest purpose. That's the highest purpose. How near are you to your purpose? Very far. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm very far. I wish I could say that I was nearing. Maybe I'm nearing, but I don't know. I, I, I still don't have any indication that I'm near what I was looking for. Have you ever had Shiva's darshan? No, no darshan and no experiences. Do you? No visions, no... no Chamatkars, no. I've been always firmly grounded. But Swapna Mere, my, I'm very active in my dream state. I see. I've seen, for example, Swami Vivekananda, I've seen Sri Aurobindo, I've seen Ramana Maharishi, I've seen Mahakali, the goddess. I put down some of my dreams. I also have a Jungian friend who does some dream readings. Wow. But you dream in Shiva's darshan? Shiva's darshan, even Kali's darshan. Do you think Shiva is difficult to please? She's supposed, he's supposed to be Ashutosha. Uh, he's supposed to be very easy to please. Uh, uh, he's showering his blessings on me, certainly. Right. But he protects me until now. You're the one who has all the, all, all the darshan. <laughs> How do you view, how do you view spirituality? It's a quest. Spirituality is a quest for, for the divine, quest for something higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's different from one's daily regular life? Yes, I think it, it is an add-on. It is an addition to the daily life. 
you can make your daily life itself a sadhana, which is one of the paths we have, the karma yoga. But uh, otherwise, if many people, you know, they spin through life without once looking deep within. They spend a whole, you know, a whole lifetime just on the outer. It actually spirituality is looking within. Right. That's what I was saying. I find you very joyful as a person. Well, by God's grace, you know, although I've been through very difficult time, physically I went through a lot of problems. By the time I was uh, uh, 20, I spent 20 months flat on my back. Yeah. With various problems I had. I went to America for the uh, operation. But despite that, by God's grace, I keep cheerful. Is that the role of spirituality? I think so. Yeah. I think so. So what keeps you entertained these days? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, I tell you, Mr. Basit, the thing I really love above all is Bhartanatyam. What I really would have loved to be in a Bhartanatyam dancer because Bhartanatyam, to my mind, is a divine dance. Wow. I've been around the world, I've seen many dances, I've seen all the Indian dances. Bhartanatyam solo performance is unrivaled. Unrivaled in the as an ensemble, they're better. For example, Swan Lake, I've seen in the Bolshoi Theatre, they have 100 people on the stage together. Maya Pradeska was dancing that day. But uh, as a solo piece, and the, what's out in the way they can, particularly the Shaiva dances, Natana Madina, the Nataraja dance, and all. I love that part. So whenever there's a Bhattarati performance, I'm there Kya in one. Delhi. Kya one. Have you ever learned dance? No, I never learned. I, mean, I couldn't have with my problems. So, I never learned. Right. so if not a politician, what would be your other career option? If I'd probably been a, a, a professor, I would have probably, because I'm fond of study also. I, I was just an undergraduate when I became head of state. I did my graduation there, and I did my MA, then I did my PhD. So it was a shock. I would have been a professor. I would have gone into education. Wow. wow. I think. Ah. So... Any passions that you've not lived so far? Has anything left? No. Well, there must be many passions, I don't know. But um, alcohol is a passion, a very dangerous one for many people. Yeah. Which I've never felt. Alcohol or tobacco, luckily, have passed, bypassed me. I think you're a man of soft hearts. So I wonder how did you survive in politics for such a long time? That is what so many people are surprised. 40 years in politics. In parliament, 40 years. Yeah. Unbelievable. But uh, I managed it well and I did good impact wherever I did. You must hear my farewell speech oh. in the Raj Sabha. There are two things I'd like you to watch the rest of the tradition. One is my 10-12 minute interaction with Modi okay. on the Gita. And the other is the same about 10 minutes farewell speech in the Raj Sabha. Mm -hmm. These two speeches are available. I will. I will definitely. Do you miss being in parliament? Or no, in parliament? no. I had quite enough of <laughs> it. I haven't seen the new parliament building, but I'm so the new old building. And I, I see you want to enjoy your cup of tea. I like a cup of tea. <laughs> I like a cup of tea. Uh, I, I have one cup of coffee a day, that's all. Mm. In the morning, to keep me awake during the puja. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things in the puja is one falls asleep. Right. Nidra is one of the well-known difficulties in puja. So, I drink the morning tea, instead of tea, I drink the coffee in the morning. Coffee is not good for one. I ration myself to that one mug of coffee in the morning. Whenever we met, we met over tea. Tea. Afternoon, I would have tea. So, this tea is not a good idea for you? No, it's not a good idea. And you built also a lot of temples. Yes, well, first of all, I look after a lot of temples. My ancestor, Maharaja Gulab Singh, founded the state of Jammu and Kashmir. 
in 1846, okay, after the Treaty of Amritsar, he set up the Dharma Trust also to look after the multiple religious places. In Jammu, and there weren't very many at that time, but in Kashmir we had places long before the Dogras, Shir Bhavani, Shankaracharya. Most of them were destroyed, like Martand. But luckily two ancient temples survived, Shankaracharya on the hill and Pandrayatran, which is on the, on the foot of the hill. And then Mahathir Ranveer Singh, the second ruler, built a lot of temples, including the fabulous Jammu temples. Ravana's temple, which is a fantastic complex of temples who move with every possible de 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 deity. And so we look after that. Dharmatras looks after between 80 and 100 shrines in JNK. Wow. In my own temples, I built a new temple in Ravana's Mandir complex, uh, Nataraja Bhagalamukhi temple. Wow. Those are the two things that I worship. Mm. So that I built a very nice temple mm. with a crystal shivling, which I had made in Germany. Wow. And that is something you should see. Mm. And I built the Karaneshwar Nataraja temple in Pondicherry, mm. all the way down there. Wow. In a pyramid. In a pyramid. It's a temple in a pyramid. The first time that the great artifact of the Egyptians, a pyramid. And the greatest artifact of the Hindus, the Dhatras, had been combined. Yeah, so that is it. Wow. And then I've uh, donated a magnificent Nataraja to a group in America in Yogaville, North Carolina. Swami Sachidananthi. Mm -hmm. And he, he built it. It is a revolving Nataraja, a mechanism. So if you put it on, Nataraja actually moves. Yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> so if one thing you have a choice to, let's say, change in India. What would you change? Just one thing. For the good of this country. Huh. I would change the way people speak. Mm -hmm. There's so much anger in their speech. Mm -hmm. There's so much negativity in their speech. Vak shuddhi. Vak shuddhi. sai hai, katu vachan mat bol re. Agar wo jata to our country itself will flower. We would. Ask in Parliament, look at the way they talk to each other in Parliament. Is that any way to talk? Yes. Shouting and screaming at each other, calling each other names, Ganiya Dena, Ye Karna, generally be everywhere. So, in the, from the current scene, who's your favorite politician? <laughs> I don't know, favorite. Well, first of all, I think Narendra Modi is very impressive. Whether you agree with all his uh, views or not, but he's very impressive. Mm -hmm. The energy that he's got and the eloquence and the way he speaks and the way he moves is very impressive. And uh, I'm fond of young, Ra young uh, Rahul. I've known him from childhood. He's developing. He's gradually by being taken seriously. So these are the two poles actually today of Indian politics. In between, there isn't anybody terribly exciting now. And on, and on the spiritual scene, who, who's been your favorite? My spiritual scene? Oh, I've had many favorites. You know, I've had several gurus. I've had a Shakta guru, who was a Kashmiri Pandit. I've had a Vaishnava guru, who was an Englishman. I've had a Shaiv guru, who was an American. And I've had a Sufi guru who was an uh, Indian or Central Asian. Wow. So all these I've had, and they've, each one of them have given me a mantra. Oh. No wonder it takes two hours. So, <laughs> so, okay. Shark mantra, the Vaishnava mantra, the Shaiva mantra, the Sufi mantra. So I've been Arno Bhadra, Yamto Vishwata, let noble thoughts come to us from every side. That is one of our key civilizational uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. We never stuck to one sort, let to be open to new ideas. That's what makes Hinduism remarkable. Right. Ekam sat The truth is one, the wise call it by many names. That's also a basic civilizational thing. We are the only religion in the world that accepts multiple paths to the divine. Yeah. The only one I can say. But all the other religions say, no, this is the path. Okay, you go with your own way. 
if you move into the divine good for you. Is that the reason you think our civilization has continued for so I think that is the reason. Because all the other religions fell prey to the to the very, very aggressive uh, religions who were constantly converting people, Islam and Christianity, the proselytizing religions. We are the only pre proselytizing religions or pagan religions we are, which has survived. Yes. Oh, there were many, but they have all been wiped out by either by Islam or by Christianity. There were lots of cults in, in, in Europe. These two religions between them homogenized the world, but not. We Hinduism still retained its primordial, and that's what makes it unique. Wow. We should be proud of that. I think Sri M also is a very dear friend of mine. Sri M is a good friend of mine. Sri M, of course, I, I knew him when nobody knew him. In some ways, I was responsible for not discovering him, not discovering him, but for pushing him into the limelight. Wow. Nobody had heard of him earlier. I started uh, introducing him to various Nepalese relations of the He's become very, very popular now. He's going around the world. I see. And uh, we've had a, we have a very good dialogue, by the way, on TV. That's another thing you might look at. Mm -hmm. You might look at my my Modi speech, you might look at my Raj Sabha speech, and you might look at, I'm sure these boys will be able to find it for you, my uh, dialogue with Ed Shri M. Dialogue with Shri M. Yeah. And uh, what, what's, what's your message now for, I would say, the youth, for the new generation? What should they do? How should they look at life? They've got to do lots of things, you know, they've got to. Um, They've got to do several things, not the one. First of all, they've got to build their body. They mustn't poison their bodies through tobacco, through alcohol, through drugs, or through unsafe sex and all. They mustn't poison their bodies. They must, the body is the temple. They must look after their bodies and try and... Then they've got to develop their minds. They've got to train their minds to learn. You know, there's so much knowledge is now every five... Years is a generation. In our terms, it used to be say, 30 years. Now everything is speeded up and technology is developing so fast that before you know what's happening, it's, it's out of your control. So they've got to learn. They've got to be very sharp now. They can't have discursive thinking for years. They've got to be learned to concentrate while they're doing their work. So the body has to be trained. The mind has to be trained. Emotions have to be trained. This is the most difficult thing to do. Because they are invisible. Yes. You can't quantify them. Rage, anger, jealousy, hatred. How do you get rid of these? You have to have the countervailing. You have to have love. You have to have understanding. You have to have wisdom. Wo, that training is missing. That, that's a spiritual value system, basically. It's a spiritual value system, if you like. But that training is missing. Yes. The other is the body, the mind, uh, the people can understand quite easily. These people don't grasp what it is. Don't realize it is as important as any of the others. So this is my message to you, sir. Develop fully all your capacities. Your intellectual capacity, your physical capacity, your, your emotional capacity. The more you develop, the more integrated a human being you will become. I see you very comfortable with latest technology also. Is that what keeps you young as well? <laughs> not really, not really. I, I have a friend who comes in and talks to me about uh, artificial intelligence. So I, I'm not at all, I don't, I've just learned how to to use my iPad. <laughs> I'm not, not, uh, that's one of the weaknesses. Yeah. I'm not, uh, not like the younger generations who are all the time, click, 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 click. In, in one of your lectures, I saw the youngest person, the youngest boy in the audience was the most impressed one. You connect with the younger audience very well. I think so, for some strange reason. Young people seem to be, uh, seem to like what I'm saying. How, how have you maintained your relevance? You, you I don't know. I do you? my own things and if they are relevant, then people seem to like it. Yeah. I think, for example, Vedanta, is really, I have, for example, a talk on Vedanta today, meaning what is the impact of 
with answer today or not. Mm-hmm. Not what it might have been 5,000 years ago. We take that wisdom, how do we use it? So that is what I speak about and I notice that a lot of people, for example, some people have come up to say, for the first time we've understand, I've understood what Vedanta is all about. Otherwise, people talk in so complicated terms that by the time they finished, we are totally confused. So I think my, my strength, if you like, my fault has been uh, expressing complex thoughts in comprehensible language. Yeah, one sentence. Wow. <laughs> you make everything look so simple. <laughs> so that's it, you know, I've, I've enjoyed this conversation. Yes, this has been a brilliant, brilliant conversation. Any statement you want to give for the one statement for the young generation? One statement. Muttishtata Jadrata Prapya Varande Mudata Shirasya Dhara Nishita Durtaya Durgam Padasat Kamyogat. From the Katopnishad, Uttishta, arise, awake, and move across the razor edge path towards your goal. There are no soft options now in history, either for individual salvation or for collective salvation. It's a difficult path we've got to go across. The youth have got to get up, arise, and walk across it towards the goal. What is the goal? A new India, a new world, a new consciousness.